Today I'm going to share with you a bit about my process when it comes to adding that first layer of oil paint to a very small area of this painting. So I have already done the blocking in here where I've used acrylic and it's just one application of acrylic paint. And you can see that my brushwork here has been very rough. It's very like dabbed to the area. And then you've got this section here, which is all oil paint. And that's probably as far as I will take the section as well, because it is a soft focus area. And so I'm gonna show you how I got to that level of blended and color, just in this small section here. That section will be what I'm gonna focus on for this tutorial. And I will blend it a little bit around into the dark over here, just so that you've got a nice blended effect. So the reason why you've got such a big difference in the sheens that we've got on the painting already, the acrylic is dry, obviously, and the oil is wet. So the wet obviously has a more saturated look to it. And the dry has obviously dried more matte. So my colors are, all the same that I have been using throughout all of my naturally colored tutorials. So I've got burnt umber, raw umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, titanium white, Payne's gray, I've got some Prussian blue. I have added some additional colors just to see how they go on the palette. So I've got some red ochre, um, gold ochre, but I haven't, like they're, they're great colors, but you honestly, you don't have to use them. And you can definitely get away with not having them on your palette. I am going to move my palette so that it is a bit closer to me. Hopefully I don't get any of this paint on my pants. We'll see how we go. So I'm going to start off with the darker tones first. And I've got a size 2 Seneca filbert. And I'm going to grab some burnt umber and then start working that into the darker zones. I'll hold my palette up so that you can see what I'm grabbing as I go along. You can make this a bit of a thicker application if you need to. It's not, it doesn't have to be super dry, but I'm looking at the overall tones I'm not trying to stick to only the dark ones. I'm just moving on as I see the tones in the area. Because this is a blurred section, I don't need to worry about getting the detail exactly. This is actually a very similar way to how I blocked it in originally with the acrylic paint. My method of applying the paint is almost exactly the same. It's just one's oil, one's acrylic. So. This is raw sienna that I'm adding here. It's very similar to the red ochre. And if anything, it's a little bit more opaque than the red ochre. So you can use red ochre in this situation over here if you want to, but if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Even though we've got a lot of soft focus happening, we're still gonna get some impression of fur. So, the rest of this area, which you can see here, there's still the direction of fur included. It still has that impression. It's not completely flat and blurry. So you can see that the paint on the right hand side here is still wet from yesterday's application, which is great. I am pretty happy about that because I'm able to blend it in quite well into the new paint that I'm adding right now. So this is just burnt ochre and I'm just working it into the um, burnt sienna. And now I'm gonna move further down again and actually try and bring a little bit more light. I'm gonna grab some raw sienna Bring it in a little bit. See how it just lifts it just that tiny little bit. And the only reason why I know to add that in this area here is because the rest of the section is very similar to what I've already done here. And I just need this little bit here to look raised so that it matches the contour of the muscle across the chest. It's a very subtle addition of light. 
and you won't you probably won't even notice it when you're looking at it looking at the painting until someone points it out to you but that's sort of the reality of most of the now this is the red ochre I believe this is red ochre on this side here and this is the golden ochre honestly there's not much of a muchness between them as you can see I'll just show you on the palette and the painting what to expect and then this is see it's a bit more opaque so this is the burnt sienna a bit more opaque a little bit of a stronger color all right now I'm going to go back to my burnt umber and darken so this entire corner here is much darker as it is folding down the body so I'm just going to cover this entire area with burnt umber and then I will work some more of that lighter burnt sienna into this to create the different shapes and tones in the values as it goes from light to dark I'll also work a little bit of Payne's grey into the very very dark areas so I'm allowing this paint to be a little thicker this is helping it to blend as well and it doesn't need to be too it doesn't need to be a thin application as opposed to how I worked on the horse portrait this is a little bit more free a little bit more gestural because it's blurry it's a blurry section so it doesn't need to have a lot of detail so therefore the brushwork doesn't need to be refined in any way I'm just working with the tip of the brush to work this paint in there and then as I come to the edge of the white here now remember white changes the values completely and the tone it's not just a matter of lightening a little bit it will change the the tone quite drastically so I'm being very careful so now that I've got some white on my brush I'm just being very careful to blend this edge here so that it's a much softer edge going into the shadow I don't want to bring too much of that white into the darker tone because it will just change it too much move on to some raw umber so this is raw umber over here in this lighter patch of fur next to the patch of the dark brown I'm just going to bring some raw umber just to darken it a little bit still raw umber again the different tones so raw umber has a bit of a green tone to it uh, whereas burnt umber has more of a red tone to it so the raw umber will be a really great shadow brown to use whereas the burnt umber is a really good sunny brown to use and you really notice it when you're working on areas such as this where there is a graduation from light to dark and you need to blend it to make it a softer transition I'm using burnt umber on this side because it's got a warm reflection of light on it now you might say that the brushwork here is too rough that's fine I'm adding the values and then I will come in with a mop brush and I'll blend everything together and it will come out really nice and smooth so don't worry about that now I'm going to get some Payne's grey which I don't know if you can see Payne's grey on this side and I'm just dabbing it onto the end of my brush and I'm going to apply it in the much darker corner over here where it's almost black this blue mixes into that burnt umber really well and creates the illusion of black without it having that dead flat tone to it that black tends to have um, if you're using pure black this is a lot more um, yeah just overall color whereas black is just your standard black absolutely no life to it whatsoever so now that I've got the depth and the darkest values in there mostly I am going to start bringing in a little light I'm just going to wipe off my brush 
I have a paper towel here that I'm going to use for that. And now I'm going to grab some of the raw umber, sorry, burnt sienna again. And bring in a bit of light. And I'm literally just going to dab it around the place. I don't want to overwork it into the surface of the panel because that will mix with the burnt umber quite a lot, which is already there. Which is, I mean, fine, if, but overworking at this stage is going to be a bit annoying to try and undo that. So try not to. As you can see, it's just sitting on top. And so don't worry about it looking a bit funny. I will show you the key part of this process. I know giraffe fur looks smooth and nicely manicured from far, but when you're painting a giraffe up close, the fur is actually quite thick and matted and has so much texture to it. So be sure to mimic that in your brushwork. Don't try and cover up that texture because this is the part that's going to really define how realistic your painting is going to look, especially when you're working in the soft focus way with your painting. All right, so now that I've got my tones down, I'm going to get a really soft bristle here. This one is a Rosemary & Co long filbert, but you can use a mop, you can use basically anything, any brush that has a really soft bristle that is really soft on the end, whoa. So it needs to be dry, don't have any paint on there. And now we're gonna work flat, so hold your wrist like this so that your brush is at a very, very steep angle to the painting and very lightly, without any pressure, gently go over these marks that we've added. We're just moving paint across the surface of each mark. When you notice that your brush is starting to pick up too much of the color, that's when you need to wipe it off again and then continue. You can flip the brush over to give yourself a little bit more time before cleaning it off again. So if you want the dark, to go over the light, then start your brush stroke from the dark area. But if you want the light tones or the lighter elements to be pushed over the dark, then start your stroke in the lighter areas. So in this top section here, I've lost texture, but that's okay. I will come back in with more paint later on. And that is a fairly well blended effect. I'm going to get my brush up again and add some more dark tones to this area over here because I've lost some of those light markings or I've lost some of those dark areas that I had initially wanted in there. And I'm going to apply this in the same way that I applied that burnt sienna. And I'm just going to really bring that dark definition back to this area. And I'm going to blend it into the surrounding light fur in the light strip here by just blending that like this. And I'm going to mix a little bit of this burnt umber that I've applied to that dark area into this section just to bring it in a little bit. There we go. And now get some more burnt umber. I'm going to actually mix a little bit of this red ochre and burnt umber. Just because the red ochre is a smidge darker than the burnt sienna, it does, it's not necessary to be honest. You can still use burnt sienna, just use a little bit more burnt umber. And I'm just going to make this section here a bit darker. I'm going to use burnt sienna actually in the end. A bit darker and a bit more warm. Beautiful. 
bring in a little bit more of that burnt sienna and burnt umber, just make it that much darker. Now I'm gonna get my mop brush, well actually my long little bit, but either way, my soft brush here. Make sure there is no paint on that end. And I'm just going to blend that in. Now I do feel like I need to locate a bit more of a reddish brown, like especially in this area here where I can really see that there is a stronger red tone. So I'm also going to blend this light area here that we added some tones to. Just added some more texture to the painting. There's something on my paper towel. And blend that in now. There's a bit more of a softer transition here. But honestly, I, I personally don't mind if we see brushwork I'm leaning more towards having this piece a little bit more gestural. So I'll probably leave a little bit more texture than I would usually. And that is a nicely blended area of the painting. Just notice that there is a little hair over here. So I'm just gonna lift that off. Perfect. Oh. Brush over the section where I lifted the hair. So because this area is so shadowed, I'm not gonna add any more light, light to that section and I'm gonna move on to something up here, which is gonna have a little bit more texture, a little bit more shadow. And it's just literally going to take adding more and more layers as we go. All right, I'm gonna leave it there for now. And move on to the next section. I just got paint on my pants.